Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Last week we uploaded our very first Econometrics 101 lesson. If you haven't had the opportunity to watch that one yet, we'll link it in the description as we strongly recommend that you watch this series in chronological order to get the most out of it. This week we are hopping into lesson two and we'll be covering things such as discrete and continuous variables, cumulative probability distributions, Bernoulli random variables and distributions, and the probability density function. With that said, let's get into it. All right, everyone, welcome back to the Econometrics 101 series. This week we're covering lesson 2.1 and that will be focusing on probability distributions and random variables. So let's begin with some simple terms and definitions you should already be familiar with if you've taken a probability or statistics course in the past. Probability can be defined as the likelihood or the proportion of time that an outcome occurs in the long run. For example, if you were to flip a coin, there is a 50% probability of you landing on heads and a 50% probability of you landing on tails. Now let's look at something called sample space. Suppose that instead of flipping a coin, you roll a six-sided die. Well, the sample space is simply the collection of outcomes of your roll. So you could roll a one, you could roll a two, you could roll a three, you could roll a four, you could roll a five, and of course, you could also roll a six. Now, an event is a set of one or more specific outcomes. For example, there is a one and sixth chance that each of the following events occur. For example, I roll a one. Or I could have also rolled a five. Or I had a chance of rolling a three. Now, in a single roll, you cannot have more than one event or outcome. That is, you can't roll a one, three, and a five on a single roll of the die. That doesn't make any sense. So that brings us to our next big concept, and that is random variables. A random variable can be defined as a variable which is a numerical summary of a random outcome that takes place in an experiment. For example, if you rolled a fair six-sided die, the result will be random. You don't know which number it will land on, yet it takes on a numerical value, so we call it a random variable. Now there's two types of random variables. There's discrete random variables, and there's continuous random variables. A discrete random variable takes on, well, a discrete set of values, typically an integer, for example, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth. Continuous variables, however, take on a continuum or a range of possible values. If this seems tough to understand, stick with us as we're about to make it a whole lot easier with something called probability distribution. The probability distribution is the list of all possible values of the variable and the associated probability that each value will occur. So in this specific example, we're going to look at our six-sided die. All of the possible outcomes are listed in the top row, so numbers one through six. Then in the second row, we have their associated probabilities, which in this case is one-sixth for each event. Now it's worth noting that the probabilities for all events must sum to one. This is because one of these events has to happen, and that's where cumulative probability ties in. Cumulative probability is the probability that a random variable is less than a specific value. So, looking at this third row, we can easily determine that the cumulative probability of rolling a four or less is four sixths or two thirds. But this was a simple example, where all of the probabilities of each event were the same. Let's look at a different example, still with discrete random variables, but with different probability assumptions. Here, we have the probability distribution that your computer crashes during a Zoom call. Now, there's a 78% chance of zero crashes, an 8% chance of your computer crashing once, a 6% probability it crashes twice, a 5% probability it crashes three times, a 2% probability it crashes four times, and a 1% probability that your computer crashes five times during the call. Now in this example, we are assuming that if your computer crashes five times, you're just going to give up on the call altogether. So that assumption means that the only possible outcomes for the number of times your computer crashes are zero, one, two, three, four, and five. That's your sample space. Your computer can't crash less than zero times, it can't crash 3.7 times, and it can't crash a sixth time since you've already rage quit by then. Now let's take a look at the cumulative distribution row. All we do to calculate the cumulative probability is add up all of the previous probabilities. So here you can see that there's an 86% chance of your computer crashing once or less. 
That's the sum of the probability it crashes zero times, which is 78, plus the probability that it crashes once, which is 8%. However, there is a 99% chance that your computer will crash four or less times. Once again, that is simply the sum of all the previous possibilities up to and including the event of four crashes. Here's a graph showing the probability distribution. So this is the same data from the table, eloquently collected and graphed on a 3D bar graph for your viewing pleasure. As you can clearly see, it is most likely that your computer will crash zero times and the likelihood of it crashing five times is only 1%. Again, if I were to add up all of these probabilities, they should sum to one. If they don't, I've made a mistake and I need to find and correct it. Next, we're looking at a special case of discrete random variables named after the 17th century Swiss mathematician Jacob Bernoulli, and that is the Bernoulli random variable. In this unique case, the random variable is binary. The easiest example to illustrate this is flipping a coin. There's the outcome you land on heads and the outcome that you land on tails. That's it. So the Bernoulli distribution is written like this. The outcome is one with probability P or zero with probability one minus P. Remember that the probabilities from all outcomes must sum to one. And in this case, they still do. P plus one minus P is one. Let's see what this would look like with our coin flipping example. So our coin toss would have an outcome of heads with a probability of 0.5 or 50%, or tails with a probability of one minus 0.5, which is also 0.5 or 50%. In this case, our 3D bar graph would look like this. Once again, all probabilities sum to one, which is easy to see here since there's only two outcomes. What if we looked at an example where the probabilities aren't 50-50? consider a scenario where you randomly ask people if they can do a backflip. Well, the answer is either yes or no. They either can or they can't. So suppose that you receive the answer yes with 0.03 or 3% probability. That is, the probability that a person can perform a backflip is 3%. Well, then the probability that they can't do a backflip is 1 minus 0.03, which is 0.97 or 97%. So that's probability distribution with discrete variables. Seems easy enough, right? Well, it's a little different with continuous variables. With continuous variables, cumulative probability is the probability that a random variable is less than or equal to a specific value. This is easiest explained with an example, so let's look at a cumulative probability distribution for a continuous variable, in this case, your commute time to school. Suppose that you're driving to school or walking, or taking the bus, train, helicopter, whatever you take to get to school. Well, your commute time takes on a continuum of values. It's extremely unlikely that you'll arrive at school at the exact same time every day, right down to the second, because of random factors out of your controls, such as inclement weather, traffic conditions, whether you need to fuel up the helicopter, etc. So we'd consider your commute time a continuous random variable. Well, we can tell from this cumulative distribution function, or CDF, that the probability your commute takes 15 minutes or less is 0.2 or 20%. We can also tell from the CDF that the probability that your commute takes 20 minutes or less is 80%. You might be wondering how we made this CDF, and if you are, don't worry, we'll be showing you how to create these types of CDFs, histograms, and more in RStudio later in the series. Now it's worth noting that since continuous random variables take on a continuum or range of possible values, the probability distribution that we use for discrete variables is impractical. So that beautiful bar graph that we used earlier, well, it's absolutely useless for continuous variables. Instead, we use something called the probability density function or PDF. Notice that this shows the exact same information as our CDF, except it's displayed a little differently. Here, we can still see that the probability of your commute being 15 minutes or less is still 0.2 or 20%. The probability that your commute falls between 15 and 20 minutes is 0.6 or 60%. And then the probability that your commute is longer than 20 minutes is also 0.2 or 20%. Notice, just like for our discrete random variables, all of the probabilities will sum to one. In this case, it's very obvious to see that most of the time your commute will fall between 15 and 20 minutes, but there's a chance it will take longer or shorter depending on those random factors. In lesson 2.2, we'll be covering some new concepts. These concepts include things like mean or average, variance and standard deviations, expected value, and things like skewness and kurtosis. If you aren't familiar with these terms yet, don't worry, you will be by the end of the next lesson. As we said, Last week, we're very excited to be starting this Econometrics 101 series and hope that you are too. 
If you like this video, found it helpful, and are excited to see more, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and leave us a comment in the comment section below. This concludes lesson 2.1. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you in the next. Thank you.